I have a relatively simple job today. Justify this purchase. <laughs> now, I've been using it. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to just like not use it and be all bad with it. Um, like I said before, I love the build quality of this new one. I'm trying to take it off here. Um, I love the build quality of this new one, uh, the Neo 3. Um, I, I like this. Um, I love the battery. <laughs> you know, I had the one and two, but I had them for a couple days, so I can't really say it's so much better build quality, but it feels a hell of a lot better of a build quality. Um, touch screen stuff like that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I'm sure it's nice. You know, I, I think I used it, <laughs> but, but I just use the dials. Um, yeah, the battery life uh, is actually, it seems pretty good. So today's shoot, I'm really gonna test it because I, I'm gonna do a, a whole shoot with this and this only, and then I'm gonna add the AOS, which I'm using now to light me. Um, Cause again, I wanna get some kind of use out of this, but you know, I, I get a lot of comments saying, you know, how disappointed everybody is in this. And I think it's a marketing issue more than a light issue because this light as an LED is fantastic. I and mean, there's just no debating it. It's a great light. Um, it has great features. <laughs> um, you know, it's really good. I, I can't like stress that enough. But to tell photographers that you can use this as a strobe because it fires unlimited for you know, 20 frames a second or whatever the hell it is. It's stupid because, you know, a point and shoot built-in flash has more power than this. <laughs> so, like, there's just no question about it. Um, so, like, if you're getting this and thinking, oh, I'm going to use this for a strobe, or the idiots that say, oh, you can put this on top of your camera and use it for an on-camera flash. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but this thing's heavy. Uh, <laughs> like, and it's big and awkward. And, you know, you put this in the shoe and then this is here and <laughs> this is what you're doing. <laughs> Use common sense. It, no. <laughs> but as an off-camera LED, I think it has some merit and I think it, it would work. Uh, so today I'm going to shoot. I have the blind done now, it's, but I'm going to shoot with my blind open. You know, use natural light, mix it with this. Um, I can color adjust this to the window tint, which is amazing, um, you know, because this window tint goes pretty much to 6800, 6850 Kelvin, which is horrible with flash because then I have to gel the flash. Um, but using this with the ambient light coming in from the window may solve a problem because I love shooting without flash. I love shooting just the camera as is. Um, but anyway, let's play with it, see what it can do, um, and go from there and, and, and give re people a reason that they purchased it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure it's being used quite a bit. And I know for uh, videographers, I'm sure this is wonderful. Um, again, off camera. <laughs> but I, I, I think it has some merit, and I think it could be used extremely well in photography if it's not preconceived as a flash, like they're trying to show you. Anyway, um, here's the video uh, coming up. Uh, we'll do the shoot and see how it does. I, I hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, leave them below. Um, I will do my best to answer them because I'm really not a pro at this light itself, um, but I will give my, my best shot. Have a great day and enjoy. So for this shoot, I decided to walk around the building just a little bit, shoot in the studio a little bit, um, and play with this light. Um, now, I it was nice in here. The, the odd part about this is the window light is, you know, behind me, behind the camera, which is obviously bringing in, uh, you know, uh, a 5600. Um, but inside, the lights are probably around 3400. So I was able to adjust and fine tune. Um, and, the, you know, these are most of these are straight out of camera. So um, it was nice to be able to fine tune the light. I'll say that without, you know, working with uh, gels and so forth. Now, this area back here, it's um, a mix between LEDs that are probably around 4,000 and 3,500. Um, again, I just, you know, averaged them out and dialed it into uh, the Neo 3, and it gave me some decent 
coloring um, straight out of camera. So you know, that part I liked. This photo was edited, um, the rest are not, they're straight out of camera. So back in the studio, I have that window to camera right, which is that tint on the window, which is like a bluish 6800, 6850 Kelvin, which is just painful. Like, because when I want to shoot mixed light, like, you know, flash and then the natural light coming in from the window, it's really hard because I have to gel the strobes. You know, again, with the Neo, I'm just adding to the light that's already in the studio uh, coming from that window, um, but it does give a kicker. You can see a small catch light in the eye, but I'm getting a catch light in the eye anyway from the window, but it does give the image a pop. Um, now, I'm shooting this at 100% power through this entire shoot, um, and, you know, the benefits, you know, the what you see is what you can get. The color balance is fantastic for me for the, you know, if I want to do daylight studio. Um, they are the benefits. So, you know, it's not all bad. Um, and it does put out really decent light, um, I have to admit. I'm interested to see what the, where the battery is going to be at the end of this shoot because we're probably going to shoot for about an hour. Um, and so far, I'm liking it. Uh, it is soft light coming off of that dome. It's not, um, you know, I, I have it relatively close to the model, but, you know, if I pulled it away, it's still going to be diffused somewhat soft light because I'm mixing light. Um, you know, and here's the catch light in the eye. You can see the window, but to the left of that, you can see that brightest dot, which is the Neo 3. So I am getting the catch light. Um, that being said, um, we're just shooting normal. We're not doing anything exciting. Uh, it's just straight shots. Um, because I just wanted to play with this Neo. I, you know, honestly, that's it. I'm, I'm just doing straight shots at a camera. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, with editing, these things could pop and be amazing. But if you're getting a good base image like this, there's so much you can do with it. Um, and, you know, I, I know some of you have this thing and are like disappointed because of that strobe and how great it is. And, and then to realize, you know, it's not so much. <laughs> but, but the LED itself, you have to admit, is pretty decent. And that shadow is coming from the LED, not from the window, obviously. Um, so it has some decent light. And I did take off the dome for a couple. It was a boost of light, as you can see there. But, you know, that you, you get that um, multiple shadow ridge on the shadow. You know, like there's ridges on the shadow because of it, which I didn't like. So, you know, I didn't keep it off for more than a couple shots and I put it right back on. I, I would rather lose the power just a little bit than, than have those ridges and have that look weird. So right now I'm probably shooting in between 125th and 200th of a second, um, 125th and 180th of a second, I apologize. I'm shooting at ISO 200 for most of these. Um, now, you know, at 125th you have to watch for camera shake. You know, for a strobe, it wouldn't matter because it would freeze it. Not with the mixed lighting, obviously, but, and you can see her hand. Like, this is her just bringing her hand up to her hair. And if you notice in this um, video, she is constantly playing with her hair. It is just never ending touching her hair. So her hands are moving all the time. Um, it's so hard to get her just to stand still with her hands because it's always back up in the hair after every single shot, every little move, it's hands and hair. So you're going to get like blur if you're shooting at 125th of a second. I mean, that was 125th and it was blurry. Um, and then you have like shots like this where you can see that there's a motion blur because it's 125th and that's photographer's error. You know, I've been doing this for 40 freaking years now and I still get motion blur from camera shake because I, I rush. You know, so if I see an image I like, I'm, you know, I, I'm pressing that, um, shutter rather than just squeezing you know so you know those basics that you learn when you first started out just squeeze that shutter and don't push it you know we still do the same things and we still have to be reminded of it so now i brought in the aos one and the neo 2 in the back as a hair light i wanted to see what it would be like um the aos one i i, I think i told you i got this thing used off ebay for 250 bucks or something um, it didn't come with a battery. It just came with uh, the light. Um, and I even had to buy the power cord because, you know, for 250 you wouldn't expect a power cord. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I don't mind it. And there was no, I used that paper that I got off of Amazon, that acetate, uh, to create the filter for it, you know, for the soft filter. 
Um, I didn't buy anything else for it. I, and I think the charger was, you know, 30 bucks or something. Anyway, so I'm using, you know, the Neo as the kicker and then that. Um, and then I'm going to put it in a darker background, you know, to stress it just a little bit more, um, see what I can do with it. Um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm just taking all of this through its paces, trying different things. Now with the window open on this and that on the background, it's not going to give you that deep, rich color that you want. It's the grayish, bluish color, which, you know, if I show, did this when I closed the, the shade, it probably would have been a lot better. But I wanted to try it. I'm here just playing, um, you know, when I tell you I practice every day, I practice every day. Um, you know, I, I didn't get decent at lighting from not practicing, and I, I like, I, I'm still not great. Um, there's so many out there that are so much better than me, but I practice. Um, th that's what I do because it's a passion. It's what I love to do, um, and, and I'm blessed to have uh, you know a bunch of people I can call on moments notice, going, "Hey, get in here. I want to try this." They come. Um, anyway, on the dark background, it's nice. You can see that on the right side, there's a little bit more light coming on the backdrop because of the window light. Um, but now I'm going to close the shade and, and really stress these things out. So, you know, I'm happy with the Neo 3 as an additive to natural light. Um, I think it's fantastic. I, I really do. Um, you know, a straight Neo, you know, versus just a straight EOS for this kind of shot, I, I think it would be a little harsh. I think the shadows would be a little harsh because I don't have the sunlight coming in the window as my fill light. Um, you know, I mean... I'm saying that the Neo 3 is the main because it's, you know, the light I'm using and, and using the window as the fill, um, which is, you know, technically true. Um, but anyway, the shoot was fun. Um, I did enjoy it. There was no issues with it. And there was an added bonus that, you know, I didn't think of because I don't usually do myself. Um, I don't do reels and stuff like that. But I thought, you know, I, I have this Nikon Z set up on the stand. Let's just, you know turn it sideways and, and do a quick video. So I did a video for Reels, um, and I was able to do it because of the Neo uh, setup and the EOS, which I would have never been able to do with the Leica alone um, or with Strobe. So, you know, that was an added benefit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the shoot. If you have any questions, leave them below.